So back at the shop again, we're gonna dyno Bill's car today. Uh, he actually drove down from Denver, or near Denver, Evergreen. right? Evergreen. Evergreen, which about, what, two and a half hours? 131 miles. So he drove down uh, 131 miles. He drives this car on race week, drag week, and everything in between. Uh, do you even own a truck and trailer to like haul the car on? So he doesn't even own a truck and trailer to hold it. I didn't think so. I think we talked about this before. So anywhere this car goes, it gets driven to while pulling that trailer outside. So it's a stick car and we'll talk to him a little bit more about the combo in it, but he's gonna make some changes. He's actually draining out the E85 right now. Gonna put C16 in it. He's making the change over on the fuels this year. So it's a little bit easier for him to just drive on pump gas and C16 is pretty good fuel too. Uh, not. You don't have as many issues running uh, C16. It's like trying to find E at tracks or on the road or any of that type of stuff. So it kind of simplifies the process when you got a street car. So he has this little setup here where you can prime the, I guess, regulator, right? Is that what you're tapping off of? It's just a, a quick disconnect on oh. the turn line. And then you pop just out the E. Hit the pump and this pump gas. And throw some, you have pump gas in it right now? Yeah. So you've been driving on a pump. Yeah. And now we're going to go 91. C16 and yep. get away from the, the E stuff. So what's the kind of the combo on it? Uh... So it's a twin turbo small block Ford. Oh yeah, uh, full, full, full Ford. 427. Yep, and you've done multiple drag, or have you done drag week? I did two drag weeks, but with, done a two drag weeks. with a different motor. I had a Cleveland motor, okay. just naturally aspirated. But the car has been on many, many road trips. and. Yeah, I've owned it almost 30 years. Yeah, <laughs> so that's awesome though. Yeah. And super clean car, super nice, <laughs> and uh, always tinkering with it though, right? Always making changes, adjustments. You put yeah. a new fuel pump in it and stuff too, so. Refining it. Yep. So that's, I think, where we're at now is just refining the combination. So actually, our buddy Brent from uh, up in Denver as well, or I call it Denver because it's all up that it's way. North. Yeah, it's north. North Denver. Of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's far north of this, yeah. but uh, he'll be down to tune it. So just going to run the dyno for these guys, let them dial the car back in and get everything uh, the way they want it. I can't tell if that's the, the sound of the fuel for the sound of my wallet <laughs> <laughs> yeah this uh c16 is not for the faint of heart as far as pricing it's really good fuel it runs so nice and you can put a lot of timing in it it's good on detonation for being a regular fuel but it is it is not cheap stuff that's what for sure 14 bucks a gallon yeah Something so like, like this that? one container of five gallons is like 90 bucks and yeah. that can vary a little bit but i mean i guess they get catch you a little bit better deal if you buy what 30 or 55 gallons of it at a time but whew, that's a it's a pricey day right there. on wastegate right there we're gonna go ahead and probably throw a little more load at it and then we'll uh, go from there so today is just a dyno rental bill wanted to rent the dyno brought down rents to tune the car before and that's what we're here doing i'm just operating the dyno for him kind of nice part of having it is that i can just come in let people use it and operate it and uh yeah so learning different things this is going to definitely be the car well it already has when it made 800 that was the most this dyno's ever seen so i'm going into a territory where i'm not sure how much load to throw at it so i'm starting to take notes and remember how much load the car wanted in an approximate amount of horsepower uh a turbo stick car because every car is going to be different with um converters and all that so just learning what load what cars want what they wanted to start at 3500 rpm so i set the uh start at 3500 instead of sometimes you go off of speed if, if depending on gearing and everything else so now that we got the load dialed in pretty good and it made what it can make on wastegate they're going to start adding some boost to it which will now start pushing the dyno a little bit further but so the the load's a little heavy right now but once they actually start revving it with more boost it's going to push through the dyno a little bit more so it's a balancing act especially on a turbo car where you start at wastegate and start stepping up so bill on this ended up putting a bunch of egt's uh, one of them dropped out so you check the plug on that just checking all that verifying everything's good now and then uh, he ended up putting a new O2 sensor in because there's some discrepancies there, kind of like what I saw in the Buick. So they put a uh, new O2 sensor in, and we're about ready to make some more pulls. 
They still had a little issue with the um, EGT falling off in the cylinder, so they swapped coil, see if it's an ignition issue. Make another pull. Five and eight EGT to see if the uh, temperature travels with the cylinder or not. Just trying to figure out if it's ignition issue or EGT issue. And then the ignition issue probably. Uh, change plug, plug wire, everything in that cylinder. Just trying to figure out why number eight isn't wanting to fire. So they turn the boost back down. We'll go ahead and run it there until they get everything figured out. And then if everything works out, we'll turn it back up. So something I'm learning with the computer here is with a turbo car, the more boost you add, you gotta have more load. So if you overshoot the load on the car, it's gonna bog it down. If you undershoot the load, it revs too fast. So we're just trying to figure out where they at, where they wanna put the power at, and where we want the dyno to sit as far as load goes. So every time they up boost, we try to up load. They're gonna uh, go ahead and add some load now that they're starting to work up. We'll go ahead and start adding load back to the dyno. And uh, look pretty 16, good though. 16 pounds. 16 pounds, they made 1,024. Yeah. Nice, awesome. They swear, that's a whole lot different with one extra plug in it. Well, it's got yeah, eight cylinders instead of seven. Yeah, that helps. <laughs> It's like in the last video where we were talking about smoothing, how much of a difference, especially on a car like this, you go smoothing of like four, it knocks it down to 1,093 and 1,033, and if you go smoothing of three, it says like 1137 right here. So I guess on NA cars, this is pretty consistent, but on like turbo cars, you'll see um, jumps in horsepower. Go with like the middle, middle of the road smoothing at three, and that's actually where we're at, so. 1090, 1080, and then uh, 1116, 1179, and 1137. So what we ran into there when it was lugging it down is the uh, dome pressure stopped working, so it wasn't making any more boost. So it went back to making like 600 uh, instead of 11. everyone so gonna go ahead and end this video off here i really appreciate everybody for watching phil's car ended up setting the most horsepower so far on the dyno with 1209 horsepower which is pretty crazy the car is extremely strong and makes a lot of power and not a ton of boost which is really impressive but with dynoing a car that's 1200 horsepower and not having anything else like that on the dyno the runs were kind of short and i want to work on making those longer and a little bit more controllable on the dyno on his, they were only running from 3,500 to 6,500 RPM, which is a really short window. But after talking to Dynacom and learning some more about the load settings and everything in the dyno, a lot of people recommend using speed base, not the RPM base, and try to come up with a more consistent load setting and maybe ramp runs is the answer to some of that as well. To where it controls the load, you just tell it the rate of acceleration that you want. But more on that later. If you guys want to see more of these types of videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We'll see you in the next video.